Hi, third graders. Welcome back for chapters three and four of Winn-Dixie. So in chapters one and two, we, we well, we met Winn-Dixie. We also met Opal and her father, who is the preacher. And we found that, you know, her father is somebody who definitely has a soft spot for less fortunates. And now Winn-Dixie is staying with them. So let's see what happens in chapters three and four with this new dog. Chapter three. I started in on Winn-Dixie right away, trying to clean him up. First, I gave him a bath. I used the garden hose and some baby shampoo. He stood still for it, but I could tell he didn't like it. He looked insulted, and the whole time he didn't show me his teeth or wag his tail once. After he was all washed and dried, I brushed him good. I used my own hairbrush and worked real hard at all the knots and patches of fur stuck together. He didn't mind being brushed. He wiggled his back like it felt pretty good. The whole time I was working on him, I was talking to him, and he listened. I told him how we were alike. See, I said, you don't have any family, and neither do I. I've got the preacher, of course, but I don't have a mama. I mean, I have one, but I don't know where she is. She left when I was three years old. I can't hardly remember her. And I bet you don't remember your mama much either, so we're almost like orphans. Win dixie looked straight at me when I said that to him, like he was feeling relieved to finally have somebody understand his situation. I nodded my head at him and went on talking. I don't even have any friends because I had to leave them all behind when we moved here from Waitley. Waitley's up in North Florida. Have you ever been to North Florida? Win dixie looked down at the ground like he was trying to remember if he had. You know what, I said, ever since we moved here, I've been thinking about my mama extra, extra hard, more than I ever did when I was in Waitley. Win dixie twitched his ears and raised his, raised his eyebrows. I think the preacher thinks about my mama all the time, too. He's still in love with her. I know that because I heard the ladies at the church in Waitley talking about him. They said he's still hoping she'll come back. But he doesn't tell me that. He won't talk to me about her at all. All I want to know more about her. But I'm afraid to ask the preacher. I'm afraid <clears throat> he'll get mad at me. When Dixie looked at me hard, like he was trying to say something. What? I said. He stared at me. You think I should make the preacher tell me about her? Win dixie looked at me so hard he sneezed. I'll think about it, I said. When I was done working on him, Win dixie looked a whole lot better. He still had his bald spots, but the fur that he did have had cleaned up nice. It was all shiny and soft. You could still see his ribs, but I intended to feed him good, and that would take care of that. I couldn't do anything about his crooked yellow teeth because he got into a sneezing fit every time I started brushing them with my toothbrush, and I finally had to give up. But for the most part, he looked a whole lot better. And so I took him into out I took him into the trailer and showed him to the preacher. Daddy, I said. Hmm, he said. He was working on a sermon and kind of muttering to himself. Daddy, I wanted to show you the new the new Win Dixie. The preacher put down his pencil and rubbed his nose and finally he looked up. Well, he said, smiling a big smiling real big at Win Dixie. Well now, don't you look handsome? Win Dixie smiled back at the preacher. He went over and put his head in the preacher's lap. He smells nice, too, said the preacher. He rubbed Win dixies head and looked into his eyes. Daddy, I said, real quick. Actually, sorry. Daddy, I said, real quick, before I lost all my nerve. I've been talking to Win dixie Is that right, the preacher said. He scratched Win dixies head. I've been talking to him, and he agreed with me that, since I'm ten years old, you should tell me ten things about my mama. Just ten things, that's all. The preacher stopped rubbing Win dixies head and held real still. I could see him thinking about pulling his head back into his shell. One thing for each year I've been alive, I told him. Please? Win dixie looked up at the preacher and kind of gave him a nudge with his nose. The preacher sighed. He said to Win dixie I should have guessed you were going to be trouble. Then he looked at me. Come on, Opal, he said. Sit down, and I'll tell you ten things about your mama. Chapter 4 One, said the preacher. We were sitting on the couch and Win dixie was sitting between us. Win dixie had already decided that he liked the couch a lot. One, said the preacher again. Win dixie looked at him kind of hard. Your mama was funny. She could make just about anybody laugh. Two, he said. She had red hair and freckles. Just like me, I said. Just like you, the preacher nodded. Three, she liked to plant things. She had a talent for it. She could stick a tire in, a gra in the ground and grow a car. 
Win Dixie started chewing on his paw, and I could and I tapped him on the head to make him stop. Four, said the preacher. She could run fast. If you were racing her, you couldn't ever let her get a head start because she would beat you for sure. I'm that way too, I said. Back home in Waitley, I raced Liam Fullerton and I beat him, and he said it wasn't fair because boys and girls shouldn't race each other to begin with. I told him he was just a sore loser. The preacher nodded. He was quiet for a minute. I'm ready for number five, I told him. Five, he said. She couldn't cook. She burned everything, including water. She had a hard time opening a can of beans. She couldn't make head, make head nor tail of a piece of meat. Six. The preacher rubbed his nose and looked up at the ceiling. Win Dixie looked up too. Number six is that your mama loved a story. She would sit and listen to stories all day long. She loved to be told a story. She especially liked funny ones, stories that made her laugh. The preacher nodded his head like he was agreeing with himself. What's number seven? I asked. Well, let's see, he said. She knew all the constellations, every planet in the night sky, every last one of them. She could name them and point them out, and she never got tired of looking up at them. Number eight, said the preacher, with his eyes closed, was that she hated being a preacher's wife. She said she just couldn't stand having the ladies at church judge what she was wearing and what she was cooking and how she was singing. She said it made her feel like a bug under a microscope. When Dixie lay down on the couch, he put his nose in the preacher's lap and his tail in mine. Ten, said the preacher. Nine, I told him. Nine, said the preacher. She drank. She drank beer and whiskey and wine, and sometimes she couldn't stop drinking, and that made me and your mama fight quite a bit. Number ten, he said, with a long sigh. Number ten is your mama loved you. She loved you very much. But she left me, I told him. She left us, said the preacher softly. I could see him pulling his old turtle head back into his stupid turtle shell. She packed her bags and left us, and she didn't leave one thing behind. Okay, I said. I got up off the couch when Dixie hopped off too. Thank you for telling me, I said. I went right back to my old room and wrote down all ten things that the preacher had told me. I wrote them down just the way he had said, said them to me so that I wouldn't forget them. And then I read them out loud to Win Dixie until I had them memorized. I wanted to know those 10 things inside and out. That way, if my mama ever came back, I, would, I could recognize her and I would be able to grab her and hold on to her tight and not let her get away from me again. All right, my friends, I will see you on Thursday for chapters five and six.